Okay, I have to confess, this is one of the main reasons I'm here today. This really caught my attention on Instagram. Uh, Courtney's created this scape. And believe it or not, all of the plants in here are edible. Is that right, Courtney? Yeah, everything's edible. Isn't everything's it? edible. So it's at least 11 years old? Yeah. Um, has anyone else heard of an Amano ship that old? That is amazing. I've been literally stated to people you cannot grow lilies as epiphytes. <laughs> Have you? And now you've done it, so thanks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, George here. I'm very excited to be in my new friend Courtney's place. Say hello, Courtney. Hi guys. And Courtney, I've known Courtney for a couple of years, I think, on Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Look, Courtney Keeps, um, very talented and passionate UK-based aquascaper. I'm here in London, in his lovely home, and we just had the most amazing lunch. Mm. Uh, Courtney is a chef by trade, and I have to say, I will be uh, coming here again. <laughs> if, if not just for the food, but also for the, look at these beautiful scapes. We've got loads to show you, but I want to start off with this one. Courtney, how long has this been running? Um, so this has been up for about six months now, okay. six or seven months. And I initially started it actually low tech without CO2. And so the CO2 has only been on it for about four months. Okay. And um, yeah, I just wanted to create a jungle. This is an evolution of a previous tank, which was called the Tidy Jungle, mm -hmm. which I posted on UCAPS. And so put, this is... I'll put an overlay of that now. Is that on new caps on one of your journals, is it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So this is the Tidy Jungle 2. Right. So this is CO2, high impact, and um, it's come along really well. All the fish look really comfortable. The plants are just looking really lush. Yeah. There's, um, there's hardly any nuisance algae in here. It's really lovely. I love it. It's a classic nature style, island style, which is one of my favourites, actually. Yeah. Beautiful manzanita wood. Is this from? That's from Aquarium Gardens. Yeah. Um, so d during the pandemic, obviously we couldn't actually visit the shop. Yeah. So I actually called up and said, I want some, but, <laughs> uh, you know, can you help me choose them? Yeah. So I designed kind of what I wanted. Yeah. And they sent me these pieces and, um, and then I put it together. Oh, that's amazing. Um, it was originally actually a triangular layout. Okay. Um, but... I had so many, I had so much time to play around with the hardscape yeah. that I thought, actually, I want to go for a, a central island look. It's great. What's this, um, this background green plant here, this really fresh green one? That's um, Nymphoides hydrophila. Ah, it's a bit of a brute, isn't it? Does that grow really fast? It grows find? really fast. And so you... week to week, that looks completely different. Yeah. Did you just pinch it off with your fingers? Or... Yeah. yeah. I pinch it up where the roots grow at the nodes. Yeah. And um, the same same with the lotus, you know, if you came back in five days' time, yeah. that would look completely different. I think this uh, is, um, these are really good plants for people that want to get, like, real quick, instant impacts, aren't yeah. they? They want to get a nice background, great for big tanks, because they take up a lot of space quite quickly. Definitely. Look at this, um, is this an Amano shrimp? That's an Amano shrimp. It looks yellow. Believe it or not, I call this the queen. Yeah. She's, I've had this Amana shrimp since I started keeping fish wow. 11 years ago. Oh, so it's at least 11 years old? Yeah. Um, has anyone else heard of an Amana shrimp that old? That is amazing. And I, I kid you not, I've had, because I didn't buy any more yeah. specifically so I could identify her. That's amazing. Um, Let's go through some of the, we've talked about the background plants. You've got classic yeah. trident fern here, which is one of my favourites. I love trident Beautiful. fern. Beautiful. I love the way, it, you know, when, it, when you've got good CO2 and light, it curls yeah. forward like this. A lot of people struggle with it, and um, I always say to people, treat it as like a medium category. Yeah. Uh, give it a CO2, give it more light, and then you'll get this really beautiful compact growth that you've got. I used to have the lights actually quite low, mm. and it struggled. Every leaf that it put out, one would die. Yeah. So it ne was never really growing. And when I turned the lights up and really up the CO2, yeah. it just, you know, it's and you really get this out. really nice, bright, lush green growth don't you yeah i find it tends to just go a bit leggy a bit dark has those like horrible brown spots yeah when it you know when it struggles a bit now i have to talk about this courtney what the hell is yeah. going on <laughs> with this lily attached to this? so i i originally had four bulbs of red tiger lotus in the back but it became too crowded 
but I didn't want to throw the plant away. Right, okay. And I had no room to put it anywhere else. So yeah. I took the bulb and wedged it into the hardscape. Yeah. And it kept growing. And it's growing as an epiphyte. I, 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 been there for four months. You've embarrassed me now because I've literally gone... <laughs> I've literally stated to people you cannot grow lilies as epiphytes. <laughs> Have you? And now you've done it. So thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, like I mean, it stays smaller, but yeah. I think that's great because it's almost like a it's like a boost philandrum. Yeah, yeah. Look at just look at these beautiful oxygen bubbles on this nymphia. Absolutely beautiful. De definitely my favourite aquarium plant yeah. of all time. So how long have you been into seriously into aquascoping? I know you've been in the hobby a, a fair amount of time. Mm. What made you get into aquascoping to start with? Um, so I actually discovered, I don't remember how I discovered it, but I remember discovering pictures of Takashi Amano skates on yeah. Google. Yeah. This was, you know, I wasn't on social media. Instagram didn't exist. Yeah. Um, and I would just flick through Google images and I showed my brother one day and was like... Look at this. This is underwater and neither of us could believe it. Yeah. And um, then my dad um, kept uh, African cichlids. And so he gave me a spare tank when he was upgrading. And I thought, right, I'm going to fill it with plants. And I learned the hard way because I just added plants and, and went for it. Yeah. And then did research. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of did the classic way of making lots of mistakes, yeah. learning from your mistakes, and then doing your research and then doing the doing yeah. the proper way. I've made every mistake in the book. I think that's yeah. great, and I think mistakes are great to learn from, aren't they? You know, no one really can say they've done much unless they've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm still making mistakes. Yeah, um, I think it's really important though to for people to understand that mistakes are, are okay and then yeah. um, a lot of people get really disheartened don't yeah. they and, and it can demotivate people but i'd really encourage folk to kind of lean into their mistakes learn from them and grow from them yeah. and actually you can become a better uh, definitely a better aquascaper because of it i definitely agree the lighting's great is it t5 t5 bulbs yeah yeah do you know what me and ty streetman were talking about this the other day mm. and the I think it's an overrated light because we just we're just really used to seeing LEDs now, aren't yeah. we? Controllable LEDs. The only downside is obviously the energy use and the heat production. Yeah. But in terms of plant growth, T fives are amazing. Yeah, and they do. They're, they're particularly good at bringing out the greens because they yeah. are, they often have a big uh, peak in the green part of the spectrum. Yeah. Because um, the human eye is more most sensitive to the green color, mm. and so you actually get this really kind of colour enhanced effect it's like quite vivid yeah sure. so you've got some meliochorus kind of carpeting yeah struggling a little bit around here we talked about the maybe it was like a flow issue or maybe a co2 yeah issue potentially. I, I think this this area doesn't get that much co2 yeah um and then the other side also gets a lot of sunlight ah okay so, so you have um ambient light coming yeah. through here and I just have to say, what an amazing collection of houseplants. <laughs> it's worth a video to itself, I think. So we won't go into too much detail on those. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a beautiful home and full of so much nature. I love it. Um, so yeah, you're getting a lot of natural light kind of from, from, the, from the sun here. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously not so much here. You could, and we talked about um, when I eventually rescaped my discus tank, mm. you know, that huge Crip Parva carpet. Yeah. That, that would that would probably do quite well around here. Um, yeah, because uh, they they take a lot less CO two to, to grow. Yeah, and it's really sustainable as well. Really slow and steady growth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like it. The, what sort of maintenance are you, are you doing on here? Is... So I do a fifty cent water change at least once a week. Okay. Um, that happens every Tuesday. Yeah. And at that time I will trim any dead leaves away mm -hmm. I'll lightly vacuum in between the gaps in the foreground and around the sides of the aquarium yeah and I'll just kind of waft around in the plants to stir yeah. up any detritus and clean the glass down and everything I love that feeling um I actually then, enjoy I enjoy that like you know when you really get down with the plants yeah. and stroke them and touch them I really like that the, especially the ferns they are quite good at trapping yeah. waste I like um, to I like to comb them with my fingers. Yeah, yeah give them a good old. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then I'll just fill it back up, and then you know occasionally I'll do the pipes and the filter work. Um, yeah, 
but it's a very, it's actually, considering it's high, it's size, you know, CO2 and everything. And not, not too high maintenance. No. No, I find that with my discus tank. Um, it's a big tank and there's a lot of waste, but, you know, big big water changes, yeah. cleaning the filters out, which is really easy in the yeah. in those Biomasters. You've got Biomaster as well, haven't you? Yeah, so there's an 850 on this side That's and then the, the beast. 350 mm. just to supplement. Yeah, wow. And add a bit of flow. Yeah. And you've got a power head as well, so you yeah. you must be getting 10 times turnover at least in here, I guess. I think so. It yeah. might be just shy, but yeah, it's... Yeah, plenty, isn't it? Yeah. And a good, a good thing is to like look at all the plants and hopefully they're all kind of gently, which they are, all kind of gently swaying in the breeze. Actually, you used to have another power head in here. Did you? Um, when it was all first growing in. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and the filters were a bit weaker, yeah. so... Nice and neat, all your tools and stuff all neatly stashed away. Very good. All right, should we move on to some of the other displays? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I have to confess, this is one of the main reasons I'm here today. This really caught my attention on Instagram. Uh, Courtney's created this scape, and believe it or not, all of the plants in here are edible. Is that right, Courtney? Yep. Everything's edible. In Everything's there. edible. Are they all herbs? So some of them are herbs. There's also some fruit plants and um, microgreens as well. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Can you talk us through? Talk us through each. I'll tell you. What, I'll point at something, and then okay, you can yeah. tell me what it is. So yeah. let's start off with the most bold thing here. What's this? So this is a red amaranth. It's okay. uh, normally grown as a microgreen, only a couple of inches tall. Oh wow! Um, but I've just let it grow to a more mature state. Yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. Look at the colour. That is fantastic. So how how long ago did you plant that? And, and now, so, so I guess they all are quite fast growers, are they? This was planted maybe about two to two, two and a half months ago. Um, the planting was actually very tricky in this scape okay. because unlike aquarium plants where if something gets too big or unshapely you can just trim them to size but with this one because they're terrestrial plants they have a final height uh, so if you trim them they stop growing uh, so i had to actually stagger the planting to make sure that everything grew up in its perfect form yeah. at the right time so um, you have a, a unique appreciation for dutch aquascaping now yeah. don't you because that <laughs> is pretty do. much the challenge with dutch aquascaping because you have a lot of stem plants yeah typically, or rosette plants, and they're all growing at different rates, and you're yeah. trying to aim for them to reach, yeah, the prime position, aren't you, at yeah. a certain point in time, so. For instance, the lettuce was the first thing to go in, and that took two months, whereas the carpet only took four days, so. This took four days, so this is a cress, is it? That's a mixture of uh, curly cress, mustard cress, and garlic chives. I have to say, it is making me hungry even though I've already <laughs> eaten a, a beautiful lunch already today. What inspired you to, to try this concept? So I I have a long list of future aquascapes that I'd like to make. Okay. Maybe 30 at any one time <laughs> and I was struggling to decide what I wanted to do and I spoke to um, a friend of mine and she said if you are struggling to decide Think about something that you'd be jealous somebody else did first. Oh, that's a really good way of looking and at it. And this yeah. one got bumped to the top of the list because this combines With my your passions career. of food and yeah. landscaping. Who, who, gave, who, talk, who told you that? Was that Rosie's idea? Yeah. That's oh, wow, that's really wise words. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to think about that myself. That's a really good uh, way to think about what might really motivates you, isn't it? Yeah. So I thought that... If anything, out of all the ideas, this most embodies me. Yeah. Um, so you had the idea already, but you just yeah. hadn't executed on it. I hadn't. And yeah. then when you had that, that... It was quite, actually quite far down on the list. Yeah, interesting. Um, so What else do we have here? Um, so in the back... Let's go from the back left, shall we? We've got uh, wheatgrass. Okay. Um, so that's, that's quite normally, trendy now with, um, in drinks and yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah, normally into health shots. So I actually did some recipes recently that I posted on my Instagram yeah. showing you how you can use all of these things. And I was showing that you can actually make wheatgrass fun. And I made some um, wheatgrass and rum granitas. <laughs> oh, wow. You, like you'd, that uh, does sound like fun. Shots. Can we try one of those before I go home? Yeah, sure. On the train, of course. I'm not driving <laughs> today, so I've already had a beer at lunchtime. It's very <laughs> exciting for me. 
And then we've got uh, sweet corn shoots in the back. That's the bright yellow plant. Oh, okay. And so that actually you have to grow in the dark. Right. Because if you grow it under light, it grows bright green and very bitter. Yeah. So that when you grow it in the dark, it grows yellow and okay. sweet. Interesting. Um, this is a Mizuna. It's a type of like spicy wild rocket. Uh -huh. And then we have red vein sorrel. That's right in the center with the like reddish Red veins. blood veins. Yeah. And we've done the red amaranth. That's a big showstopper. Yeah. And we've got some pat choy. Yeah, no, this is it. the pat choy here. Yeah. Yeah. And oak leaf lettuce. And then to the left, we also have a Lola Rossa lettuce. That's like an Italian variety. Mm -hmm. And is it zero maintenance then? Are you doing anything daily to it? All I do is mist it once a day. Okay. With, um, I started off with rainwater yeah. mixed with some liquid seaweed. And then now that it's grown in, I just use um, RO water only because it stops me having to clean the, yeah. the glass. That's a nightmare, isn't it, when you get those mineral? Yeah. Mineral up. And it's quite tight in there, so. Well, this is fantastic, and I'm, I'm really even more impressed when I see it in the flesh. The hardscape yeah. is really good. <laughs> just let's just give you some credit for a lovely hardscape design, lovely flow. Thank you. Um, but yeah, really great work, mate. And I know it's a novelty, but I think novelty is really important in the hobby, and it can, yeah. you know, create a bit more of a peak of interest, maybe, and hopefully some more people that, you know, might not have discovered aquascaping will see something like this and, and yeah. you know, just see things a bit differently. I think it's great. Yeah, I think the language of this scape is actually quite universal because mm. I've showed pictures of this to people that don't know anything about aquascaping. Yeah. And they instantly knew, they, they got it, they understood. Yeah. And Yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? Because... Um, I think, do you think people have like a preconception of, of an aquarium and they, yeah. and they kind of fail to make the connection of having something really beautiful and artistic combined yeah. with something that they have a preconceived notion that is potentially, you know, a lot of hard work, ugly, you Absolutely. know, dead goldfish from the fair, Absolutely. you know, foul smelling, a lot, a lot of hard work. But actually we know that with the right equipment, care and attention, maintenance, we can create beautiful scapes, but you've actually done something to yeah connect people yeah at, exactly. a, at something an even more uh fundamental level in food yeah right? everyone yeah everyone needs, needs food you know you, you can connect... set something like this up in your in kitchen yeah and just take bits from it you don't even need to use um plants from seed you could buy plug plants yeah and fill the gaps in and just have fun you know creating something that you're also going to eat yeah <laughs> it's fantastic Cool, man. Right, let's take a look at uh, another one of your beautiful creations. Uh, let's take us through this little beauty. So this is my five gallon, 25 litre shrimp tank. This is actually a shrimp rescue tank. Okay. Because I originally put them in my main aquascape and half of them got eaten. <laughs> so I, put, I made a dedicated scape for them using some uh, hardscape that I just had laying around in my garage. Mm -hmm and um, bought some plants and thought I'd make a dedicated home for them. And they're doing great, aren't they? Yeah, um, they're breeding like crazy yeah. um, and have really kept the vivid red colour, um, which was quite surprising, uh, but yeah. Do you feed them anything in particular? Um, I feed them a mixture of things. So I've got rapashi gel, oh, yeah. which you can make into cubes. And I've got some like shrimp, um, some like shrimp tablets that I've thrown there. I only feed them about once a week. Yeah, I mean they they'll live comfortably off the biofilm and yeah. the algae and there's yeah. plenty in here. For yeah, them in, in some ways it's good to keep them a bit hungry. Yeah, and I find that when you feed them less, they're actually more active, and do you see them around and yeah, absolutely and grazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have um, pe people find it uh, difficult to believe. I've got them in my discus tank. Cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp. And they wow. and then like you say, they breed like crazy. Yeah. And they free swim. Yeah. And and the Amano shrimp as well, often they'll get to the, the discus food before the discus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amanos are very They're very aggressive. Very aggressive <laughs> when it comes to food. I've seen Amanos fight off fish oh, yeah. ten times actually. Yeah. And they're so hardy. I mean, mine jump up when I had at Rimless tanks, they used to climb out the tank and I used to find them halfway up with our stairs. Yeah. 
I've got two. I've got two in here. Two Amanos. Surprisingly, they haven't jumped out because I keep the water level quite high. Yeah. Um, but they're obviously quite content. So, so you got CO two on here. It's quite high tech, isn't it? Yeah. So. I actually call this Scape Frankenstein because it's a <laughs> mixture of equipment I've just acquired over time. Yeah. So the CO2 and the lights are pretty much the newest things. So it says Jiros light, is it? Yeah, that's C2 RGB. And then you've got the, is that an Acorio or a twin star? Yes, Acorio Neo Tiny. I like these, I like the design, very discreet. Yeah. And then I really like what you've done with the filtration here. So you've actually got an external filter Kind of, and the and the holes are drilled through the base of the cabinet. Yeah. And then this is a was it? No, was a. It's a filter smart, smart one hundred. Nice. So it's got. Is that got the built-in heater as well? Yeah. Yeah. I thought for this size, the built-in heater was essential because yeah, you, you can't fit in it. Oh, it just look ridiculous, there. wouldn't it? Having a huge heater in there. And this filter really packs a punch. Yeah, like, you, really have to, you punch. have to turn down the flow a little. Yeah, it's it's, it's half closed. So. Oh, okay. Or half open, depending on oh, where yeah. you're looking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so plant-wise, we've got a classic Monte Carlo carpet, is yeah. that right? So it's got Monte Carlo in the back with a few little bits of Marsalea Hisuto. Oh yeah, that's the like the, the darker green round yeah. leaf. Staragani weapons in the Yeah, in the, in the crevices. Good old Lugwig, yeah. There's a little bit of a um, Cryptocorne Albeda brown. Yeah, just poking out there. I love this. Not often used in escapes, but... I think it's really great. It's really nice. The coloration, proper color. is yeah, really nice. Yeah, and then we've got big chunks of pearl weed in the back. Yeah, hemianthus, microanthemoides. Actually labelled as advanced category by Tropica, but I think I, it's easy. I I think it shouldn't be labelled as hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not difficult. Not like Bugia prolustris. And that is super red. Yeah. And mm. there's a few stems of Rotala in there. Okay. Just from the old design. Yeah. Right. Any future plans for this? Looks like it's ready for a rescape at some point. Yeah, so this tank is actually being upgraded to a, a 90 litre uh, contest tank. So all the shows oh. are going into the contest oh, tank. okay. And Can we I, give people a sneak preview of that? Yeah, why not? Sure? <laughs> yeah, go I know it is very much in the design phase. I mean, it's probably going to change. Hey, can we get the light on or is it? Yeah, thank you. I propped it up on household items just so I can get an idea you can of So you've got the height, but you can see the concept. So you're going like. Um... This is actually the design is inspired by Tolgi Woods from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, wow. Have you got a photo? Have you, have you used for inspiration? Um, I have, yeah. You can send me that and yeah. we'll put it over in the video. Um, so I'm actually going for quite mystical, slightly creepy, Yeah. using some rarer plants that you don't see often and probably will, I don't know, I feel like I, I, a PLC might be a bit stirred by it because it's not going to be classic at all. Well, we don't want classic no. necessarily to win contests. I mean, I'm very much not a classic person. <laughs> no. So. Or you, if everyone's classic all the time, nothing ever gets better or evolves, does it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love it. Well, I don't love it. It's not my style, but I love it. Yeah. You love it. Yeah. You know, and it's your thing. And yeah, I can see it's going to be quite different. You're going to do mosses? Yeah, so uh, I'm actually, epiphyte, epiphytes. I'm actually planning to do a dry start initially. Okay. And paint mosses over oh, the yeah. branches and the trunk to kind of yeah. cover most of it. Have you, plant have you seen that technique with the blender and some moss yeah and then some yogurt and you can paint it on yeah yeah, yeah that's pretty cool is that what you're gonna do is it yeah, yeah. i'm gonna try that so when when are you gonna get started is this gonna be for ioplc 2022 yeah okay. so i'm i'm gonna be building this over the next couple of weeks i guess cool and um yeah and then you'll see the final thing Next year. <laughs> Can we share people the rare plants you got there? Or is that a secret? Yeah, no, it's not a secret. So Courtney's been kind of propagating some rare, rarer plants down here. He's got this little grow light here, which is really cool. And this, these little poly tubs. So we've got some boost philandra. Uh, a friend of mine, um, Sid, actually showed me how to oh, is make this Sid's is it? Sid's scapes. And um, Tom, who's London Aquascape. Oh yeah, and a Tom Page. Yeah, yeah. Tom gave me these boosts of philandra. Wow, is it Thea? 
Um, this is Kattegang, actually. Oh, it's Kattegang, is it? Nice. Um, so it's just a layer of tropical soil yeah. and crushed lava rock. Wow. And then I've added some springtails to take the mould away. And this is an, an effective way to propagate because I've never yeah. read the top tips. I've been growing some UG like that. So I've repurposed some um, old tropical pots. Yeah. Perfect. I never throw them away and just keep any spare plants and then you get a new pot That's when great. you're ready. What a great idea. All about environmental sustainability. That's the perfect way to recycle. Reuse, in fact. Yeah. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And some rarer ones oh. I've got. What some, what we got in here? So Sid and I have actually ordered a rare variegated boost. We don't have it here yet, but okay. it's on order. Okay. But I ordered some needle leaf. Ah, nice. Um, yeah, Dunlay used to do that. Yeah, Bicker Plant is so trendy at the moment. Yeah. I'm just always mindful of where they get their original stock from and make yeah. sure it's not and make sure it's sustainably sourced and not from um, so you, you know, can only get them from certain places in the world. Yeah. Well Borneo is where it's grown. It's the only place that it grows naturally. Mm. But unfortunately the Borneo the rainforests are getting decimated for palm oil production. Yeah. Oh, so you just have to be really mindful of where you get your your piece of phalanges from. Yeah. Beautiful mate. Um and can we Take a sneak peek at your bedroom. You've yeah, got uh, sure. a couple of beautiful displays up there, I understand. Yeah. Cool. How many house plants have you got, Courtney, all together? Oh, uh, there must be at least 20. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, this is nice. This is a philodendron. Yeah, that's... Uh, I've got one growing all over my um, archway thing oh, at nice. home. Yeah, it's great now. Oh, look at this. We'll come back to that. Let's have a look at this. So this is what, uh, what do you call this? A terrarium, a pond, yeah, a bit I, of a mixture? I think this is an open terrarium, I would say. Um, so this is a carpet of UG that was given to me by... You say UG? Eugicularia oh. graminifolia? Yeah. Yeah, we have to tell that we're, we're not on the internet now. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> speaking for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was given to me by Jordan Stewart. Oh, yeah. Um, from his um, infamous shrimp tank. He's got a great uh, Instagram feed, Jordan. Awesome. And so this is actually some uh, Rotala blood red um, that I found on eBay. Yeah, it's beautiful. And repens. So this is super. I've not even seen this before. It's got Rotala really blood red. Yeah, it's got really good coloration. Have you tried growing it underwater yet? I have actually. Um, it doesn't grow too red because of the nitrates in the tap water. Ah, okay. Um, but, so I mean, what? even immersed, it's growing really red. So, do you miss this every day? So, I missed it once a day with, with um, do a Wabikusa spray. Is this the one that smells of peppermint? Yeah, it smells so good. Can I spray it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, really good stuff. It is. Yeah, I use this on... Um, my Dua Palada 30, which I'm selling by the way. Oh, okay. So anyone that wants to buy my Dua Palada 30, uh, if you've got the initiative to get hold of me and offer me a good price, someone can buy my Dua Palada 30. Okay, let's have, check this out. What's that? And then, yeah, this is my ultra mini um, pond. I love this. So that was inspired by um, Shrimpery. Yeah. On Instagram. He's got a great account. Is he still active? I haven't seen much stuff from him lately. Yeah, he's still posting. Yeah. Um, so this was actually made from, this isn't a tank, it's made from a makeup organiser that I bought online. Oh, wow. And so it's only five centimetres deep. Was it acrylic rather than glass? It's acrylic, yeah. Perfect. And it holds water. Is yes. it one, is it moulded from one? It is. Yes. Yeah, oh, wow. Serious. How much was that? Um, about eight pounds. I actually bought it to make shelves in my cabinet. Yeah. And for that, looks good for an aquascape. Have you got any livestock in here yet? There's only one ram's horn snail in oh, okay. there. Um, I don't you don't think really it's want to big enough for I fish. I wouldn't put shrimp or fish in there, no. really. Snails is fine, I'd say. Yeah. I love the way the stems are creeping. Yeah. And I love this pattern. I've always been a fan of this kind of growth pattern. You know when Rotala does it? Yeah. In an aquascape. I really love it. I just let them kind of run wild. Yeah. And it's come on really well. It's only been about six weeks. 
I don't know if that's like dying, but the pink tips on the end. Oh, so that's its natural. Is that that? Yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's uh, water celery. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, 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 that's beautiful. We had an old terracotta pot that's actually older than me. Wow. And filled it with water and um, some old cow aqua soil. Oh, okay. And um, planted some pond plants and they're doing really well. Um, and we've even got mosquito larvae. Yeah, great live food for the fish. Yeah. This is what Ty Streetman does. He, he grows all his own live food and little things like this. Yeah. This is great though. These are just like plants from a garden centre. Yeah. Um, Pong plants, did you say? Yeah, this is actually Elio Caris. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Pav, not Pavula. Is it Mont Montedivensis? No, it's another type. I can't remember the name, but yeah. I'll have to look it up. It's lovely. Um, some more blood grass, some dancing star that's upstairs as well. Yeah. And um, flip pink flamingo. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Well, thanks so much for sharing all your beautiful scapes. Thank you. Courtney. Thanks for coming. Um, let's go and have a chat inside, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for inviting me, mate. I've really Thank enjoyed you. seeing Thank your beautiful home and your beautiful scapes. It's hard for me to pick a favourite, personally. Um, let us know in the comments which is your favourite and why. I think from a purely, like, thinking outside the box, creative thing, the edible apple scape, yeah. I think something, something to live with, it would be this one. Something to tinker around with would be the, you know, your little five gallon thing. Yeah. And obviously you've got this contest tank that you're really going to put a lot of time and energy in. Yeah, there's something to tickle every Yeah, all your, your boxes are ticked, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think just more importantly for me, it's lovely to come and visit other human beings that have a similar passion. Yeah. You know, and you're all kind of at the beginning of your journey and I can see you know, you've got great things ahead. We've been chatting about a potential project we might be working on yeah. uh, with Rosie as well. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be an exciting one. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, but thank you for inviting me. Off, off, yeah, such an amazing dinner. This guy, honestly, <laughs> if you ever have an opportunity to eat any of his food, then take it up. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I um, love it. Well, what a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, George, for coming. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Take care, keep on escaping. Cheerio. Nice. Okay, I have to say this is the main reason that wanted me... No, no, no I'm going to start that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's not plugged. <laughs> right, so don't worry, no one's going to watch this video. Oh, God. Yeah, That's dear. really funny. Classic. That's embarrassing. Hey, here we go. I particularly like the blue of the sponge. It really complements <laughs> the grey of your hard scope. <laughs>